Okay, welcome back to class now. Okay, in a break now. I believe that you are fresh now. Okay, so the and you, when you're fresh, then you have strengths. Okay, the, uh, in following my, in following my lecture. Okay, so again we are still in the session to on the causes of invariant validity, and uh, this is the cause of invariant validity. Okay, which is related to the vitiation of will. Okay, we have talked about the situations where the will of the parties uh, is vitiated. Okay, for some reason. Okay, we have talked about all these situations now. We are what remain to be said are uh, this one. Okay, fraud, duress, and mistake. Now we are looking at fraud, the situation which which is concerned with fraud. Okay, when we <coughs> look at fraud. Okay, look at the word fraud. What is it? Well, I believe that the law of all countries contains the rules okay, concerning fraud. In Thai law, we also have a provision in our civil and commercial code, okay, which is ded dedicated to fraud. Okay, the provision of Thai law also sets forth the legal consequences of fraud okay, when the juristic act, when a juristic act is procured by fraud. Okay. First of all, we are going to look at the meaning of fraud first. What is that when we talk about fraud? Well, fraud, as the name suggests, okay, it is the use of a trick. Okay, it's use of trick okay, in order to deceive somebody else. Okay, through a false statement. Let me that if we talk about you know the situation, the situation between A and B, A tells B, you know, a false statement in order to induce B to enter into a juristic act with A. Okay. When A does okay, deceitfully the make a false statement to B in order to induce B okay, to enter into a juristic act with A. That is fraud. Okay, I have a car. I say, well, the, this car is uh, an ancient car. Okay, this car is uh, something to very, very, very. This car is an antique. In fact, this car is not an antique at all. Or oh, I have a painting. I say, well, this painting has been by a very famous artist. But when I tell you a lie like this, I want to, you to make the contract with me. So I induce you to make the contract with me, and. In order to do so, okay, in order to induce you to make a contract with me, I give you a false statement and I do it, okay, with the intention to deceive you. So the uh, important thing is the deceit. It's not just a question of you know it's not just a question of telling a false statement to somebody else, but it is the telling of a false statement with the intention to deceive. Yeah, I want to sell my painting to you at a higher price. And I know that this is, you know, the, this painting is not by a famous artist. But I just tell you a lie that this painting is by a famous artist. So in this case, it's fraud. Because I give you a false statement with, inten with the intention to deceive you. Okay, so the statement is false and it is made deceitfully. This is the nature of fraud. Okay, what is consequence of fraud? We will discuss it later. Okay, you can see that if we are back to you know the language. Okay, the the A and B language. Okay, just now, if A tells a lie to B. Okay, let's say that A tells a lie to B that this painting has been by a famous artist. In fact, it is not made by. It is not by a famous artist at all. In this case, B believe in A's lie. The reason why B enter into the contract with Z is because of this false statement given to B by A. Correct? Right. You can see that in this case, the false statement given by A to B causes B to have what? To have sort of the mistake or misunderstanding. Right. B decided to buy this painting from A because he B was mistaken that this painting was by a famous artist. 
Right, so that's the reason why B decided to enter into the contract with A. A to a lie to B, that's this painting was by a famous artist. B relied on that lie and B bought this painting from A. So B did so through the mistake or through the misunderstanding. Okay, i.e. misstating that this painting was by a famous artist. In fact, it was by a very, very normal artist. You can see that this situation, okay, the situation dealing with fraud, it is also the situation dealing, dealing with mistake as well. And in this country, at with other countries, we also have the principle of law on mistake. We also have the principle of law on fraud and the principle of law on mistake. You can see that the same facts, the same set of facts may trigger both principle of law, the principle of law on mistake and the principle of law on fraud. Okay? Depending, okay? So which principle of law can you just resort to in order, you know, to in order to, to, to have, you know, the best benefit? That depends on you. That's up to you. Okay? Let's say just now, if A told B a lie that this painting was from a famous artist, in fact it's not. Okay, in this case, you can see that this is fraud committed by whom? By A. Okay, I tell you in advance that the contract between A and B is voidable if we apply the law on fraud. But similarly, okay, we can also apply the law on mistake. Okay, well, the consequence of mistake may be that the contract is void or is voidable, as the case may be. So, whether or not you may you know, em, em, uh, apply the law on fraud or on mistake, it's up to you. If you want to apply the law on fraud, then the contract is voidable. Okay, if you want to apply the law on mistake, sometimes the contract is also voidable, but in some cases, the contract may be void, see? So you can just, you know, just make, the, make the most use of any law which is available to you. But if the mistake in question occur without fraud, if the mistake occur without fraud, then you can just apply the law on mistake, not the law on fraud. Okay, don't worry about it now because we have not. Okay, so we have not uh, studied the law on mistake yet. Okay, but just to let you know that sometimes, okay, the same facts, the same set of facts may trigger more than one doctrine of law. Okay, you may make use of, you know, you may call into play the the mistake rules or you know, the fraud rule, the fraud principle. Okay. Now we are going to focus on fraud. Well, in our law, as embodied in the civil and commercial court, we have maybe three types, three three types of fraud. The first one is the fraud in general. I call this one general fraud. The second one is called the incidental fraud. Again, okay, I will put the Thai word in the parenthesis for you, in order for you to know also Thai, the you know Thai terms. Okay, because you know in, in order to teach law in English, okay, the, the drawback may be that if you just uh, you know the, the use the English version of the CCC, you may not know the Thai wording. Okay, Thai words. So I recommend that you also look at the Thai words. Okay, if I feel that. Well, the need is day for you to know to, to the time word as well, as well. Okay, I am going to just put the time word in the parenthesis for you. Okay, so back to the time stop fraud. The first one is general fraud. The second one is the incidental fraud. The third one is fraud by silence. Now we just mean to look at the first one, the first time of fraud first. Fraud. In general or general fraud what is that well the fraud the general fraud it is okay the fraud committed by one party in order to induce the other party to enter into a juristic act okay if there is no such misstatement if there is no such okay misrepresentation of fact then the other party, the other party would not have concluded that juicy act. That is the general fraud. 
I again, let's say A tell a lie to B that this painting has been by a famous artist. In fact, it's not. So B relies in this lie, and B just decided to buy this painting from A. You can see that if A had not exercised this fraud on B, then B would not have made this contract. Correct. So this is the fraud in general. Okay, the mis misstatement given by A to B in order to induce B to make the juicy act. Without that misstatement, without that um, uh, you know the misrepresentation, misrep then B would not have concluded the juicy act. Right, that is the fraud in general. Okay, to give you more example. Okay, the, similar to the one I have given you, uh, I have given you a while ago. Let's look at, let's have a look at the first example. Okay, about the sale of land. A, he has a piece of land. Let's say that this piece of land is located in a very, very, in a in a suburb of Bangkok. Okay, let's say in Nong Chok. You can see that Nong Chok is, you know, the the area which is not quite rich, right? So the land in this area seems to be of low venture, okay? Not like the land the on Silom Road or what, right? So A has a piece of land in Nong Chok, okay? And uh, he wants to sell this land to B. He knows that this land is not of high venture. And he tries to tell a lie to B in order to, you know, the, in order to elevate the price of this land. Okay, so he told me that, well, you know, B, this land is uh, rich of minerals. This land is rich of minerals, of economic venture. In fact, this land has nothing. This land has a lot of what? A lot of dog shit, the cat shit, or what, whatever, okay? Right. Uh, or bullshit. I don't want to use this, but okay, bullshit should be used for, you know, somebody who just mean to borrow a lot, a lot of watches from friends. You know, and does not want to return the watch to friends, and you know he's trying to give argument that you know he borrowed the watch watches from friends, and uh, tried not to reveal you know the uh, property uh, to the anti the national anti corruption commission. I don't know. I don't want to talk about politics now. I'm very fed up fed up with the politics in this country. When the politicians in the country have no what have no sense of accountability. If this happened in our country, I, I'm sure that means that this, this politician will have to resign. But in this country, they well, no, resign. You know, even though he just said that, well, if people do, do not want him, then he he would resign. Then you know, a lot of people just you know to have watched it, okay, through website. Okay, ninety-six percent to say, well, the, they don't want this, the person, okay, to be in office. But you say, well, no, no resignation. Okay, back to this one. Right. Uh, a has a land, has a piece of land, located located in Nong Chok. The venture of this land is rather low. Okay. A wanted to sell this land to B at a higher price. That's why A told B a lie that this land was okay rich of minerals of eco economic venture. In fact, this land has nothing at all. B believes in A's lie. That's why B bought this land from A at the price of 5 million baht. Under this land is worth just 800,000 baht. See? So if A had not told a lie to B, B would not have bought this land. The reason why B bought this land from A was because B believed in A's lie. Okay. Without this misstatement, without this fraud, B would not have bought the land from A. Okay, so this is the fr the fraud in general, All right? Now look at the other the, another example. Example number two. I think the one which I just mean to uh, rest just now. Remember the paintings, the painting situation, the painting saga. Okay, A has a painting. He wanted to uh, sell this painting at a higher price. He told a lie to B that this painting was by Master Shalom Chai. You know, if people, if you mean you tell people that well, this painting is by Ajahn Shalom Chai, right? Then 
the price is very very high. In fact, this painting uh, is by the, you know, a very very no, a very the only, I mean the, uh, just a very, no, a non reputation. Okay, sorry, non reputable, the uh, the artist. So the price of this painting is maybe just one thousand baht, but because of the law told by A to B about this about the artist, right? A could sell this painting to B at the price of just one hundred thousand baht. But when B knew the truth, what is going to be remedies available to B? In this case, if B had known the truth, then B would not have bought this painting at all. See, so if if the if it is the statement, the mis the misstatement in a way that without this misstatement, then the other party would not have concluded the to react at all. Then that is fraud in general or general fraud, right? Now. What is the consequence of this general fraud? The law of our country, okay, in our CCC, okay, the law provides the, consequ the consequence of general fraud as follows. A declaration of an intention procured by fraud is voidable. This is the rule in section 159. You get the one word voidable, okay, don't worry, don't worry about it now, okay, voidable, okay. We have two words, void and voidable. Don't mix it up. Don't mix them up, okay. Void and voidable. Void and voidable. In the case of fraud, if a juristic act is procured by fraud, then that juristic act will be just voidable, not void. What is the difference? Well, we, we will spend I mean, one whole session I mean, uh, on the differences between void, being void and being voidable. Okay, not now, but uh, just tell you I mean, uh, just rough idea that when the law say that something is voidable, that means that it remains valid until it's challenged by the injured person. Let's say in this case, if you are B, remember B bought the land or B bought the painting. Right from the two examples a while ago, B bought the land or B bought the painting, okay, in reliance on the, the law told by A. In this case, the contract of sale between A and B is voidable. That means that the contract remains valid until B challenged, until B makes a challenge. If B does not make a challenge, then the contract remains valid. If B makes a challenge, then the contract will become void. It is voidable. It's not void in the first place, okay? It is voidable. If B makes a challenge, then it will become void, okay? When B makes a challenge, the act of making this challenge is called the act of avoidance. If B makes a challenge, or the person who is specified by law, well, sometimes uh, not only B who can be challenged, okay, there may be some other persons specified by law who can make the challenge, okay. If the person specified by law makes challenge, then that person is avoiding that just act. Okay, avoid mean what? Avoid, avoid here doesn't mean escape. That is, you know, that the word, that is the ordinary word. But avoid here, it is the legal term. Avoid means making it void. It's not void from the beginning, but you make it void by making a challenge. Okay, so the act of making a challenge is called avoidance. Okay, when the voidable act is avoided, then it will become void from the beginning. That is consequence laid down by law in section 176, okay, which provides as follows. When avoidable act is avoided, then it is deemed to have been void from the beginning. Okay, so back to the example just now. Let's say that the land saga just now. A, so a piece of land to B, okay, uh, telling B that this land was rich of mineral, of economic value. In fact, this land has nothing at all. Okay, when B knew the truth that in fact this land Okay, did not contain any mineral or economic value, 
B can check fine, okay. A is just my friend, I will do nothing, okay. Then if B does nothing in this case, then the contract of sale between A and B remains valid. But you say if B gets so furious, you say, well, how can you do this one to me, okay? Okay, I bought this land because I believe in your statement, okay. You told me that this land was full of, or was rich of mineral of economic value. I believe you, okay. So now I know the truth. When I know the truth, then I don't want to be bound by this contract anymore. I want to, therefore, avoid this contract. When B avoid this contract, then this contract is deemed to have been void from the beginning. When it is deemed by law to have been void from the beginning, that means that you have to treat as if that contract did not exist at all. If A received the price from B, A would have to return the price to B. If B received the, you know, the property from A, B would have to return the property to A. Both parties would have to be restored to their original positions. Okay, well, uh, don't worry about it, it now. Okay, we are going to discuss, you know, the consequences of Curiosity X, which are void and which are voidable. Mean in a separate uh, session. Okay, at full at full length. Okay. Now. Right, uh, back to the the the, the exam, the exam, exam number one and number two, which we have uh, rest a while ago. Okay, remember in the exam in the example number one dealing with the sale of land, the exam number two deals with the sale of the painting. Okay, in both examples, then B can just avoid the contract. Okay, but it doesn't mean that B can avoid the contract at any time, the law sets the limit, okay, for B to exercise his right. B need to avoid the contract within, in fact, a one-year period upon the cessation of the factor which causes the voidability. This means that if B know the truth, after B know the truth, from then on, B will have to avoid the contract between B and A within one year. If B does not exercise that right, then B cannot avoid the contract anymore. We will talk about this in the, maybe in two weeks' time, okay? I mean, the, about the, you know, the, how to exercise the right in the case where the contract or the jurisdiction act is voidable. Now, one thing is this. Remember, if we, are, if we go back to the consequence of you know, the Juristic Act, which is procured by fraud. Back to section 159, remember just now, we talk about 159. 159 say what? 159 says that a Juristic Act, which is procured by fraud, is what? Voidable, very good. It's voidable. Right. Now, in order for a juristic act, which is procured by fraud, to be voidable, there must be this element. The element of inducement. Okay, the element of inducement. If there is no inducement, then despite fraud, the juristic act in question will not be voidable. Okay, inducement means what? Inducement means that, well, you must, if you are B, Back to the situation where A tells the lie to B in order to make B enter into the contract with A. Okay, in this case, A induces B to enter into the contract with A. Okay, B believe in the lie told by A, and B decide this decided to make a contract with A. In that sense, B has been induced by A's fraud. Okay. But it, let's suppose that even though A told B a lie, B did not believe in that lie, and, but B wanted to make a contract with A, but not because of the lie told by A, because B knew the truth. But B nonetheless wanted to conclude the contract with A. In that case, there was no inducements on B's part. If that happens, then B cannot Okay, argue that the contract is voidable. I'll give you one example here. And then I will be back to the law, okay? I'll give you an example first and then I will state the law, okay? You will have to just say, I mean, the, the, 
defects. As example first, let's say that we have again A and B. Okay, A has a diamond ring. You know the ring, right? Do you remember the ring like this? Yeah, the general the Rolex in this country, okay, who is very very notorious now around the world, okay. So you have diamond ring, okay. You are A here, okay. A so the the diamond the diamond ring to B, and he told B that this diamond ring, this diamond was the genuine diamond, which was from South Africa, okay. Anyone has been to South South Africa? Have you been to South Africa? Okay, that is famous for what? For diamonds. You know, many many people go to this I mean, the country to buy at uh, diamond, right? Have you? Okay. So the, when A told me that this diamond was from South Africa, that means that the price must have been very very high. Okay. A wanted to. Induce B to buy this diamond ring from A, okay. But B, he was, you know, the an expert in precious stones. B did not believe in the lie told by A. B knew even from the beginning that this diamond was made in Myanmar. Because B, he was the he was an expert in precious stones. Even though he knew the truth, he still B. Even though B knew the truth, B still bought the ring from A, because B considered considered that this ring was still worth buying. The price was not very high. A sold you know this diamond ring to B at you know a very reasonable price. So B bought the price, so bought the ring from A nonetheless. Even though B knew that this diamond ring was not from South Africa. You you can see that when was there any fraud by A? Yes, there was fraud, but the fraud committed by A did not induce B at all because B knew the truth from the beginning. In this case, the choosy gap between A and B was not voidable because there is no element of inducement. Where is the element of inducement stated in the law? Okay, it is stated in. If you come back to the law, okay, in section one five nine, we come back to one five nine. In fact, we have not to talk about one five nine. Okay, we now we 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 just look at one five nine. Okay, one five nine paragraph two, not paragraph one. Uh, one five nine paragraph one. We have talked about that already. Okay, one five nine. Remember, paragraph one is the provision which uh, says that the. Which act, which is procured by fraud, is voidable. One five nine paragraph two goes on to say this one. Okay, an act under paragraph one is voidable on account of fraud only when it is such that with a which such to act would not have been made. Meaning what? If there had not been the lie told by A, then. B would not have made a contract with A, right? But in this case, even though there was a lie from A, B would nonetheless want to buy this ring from A. Let's mean that B was not in any way induced by the lie told by A at all. In this case, the element of the, in, the elements of inducement is missing, so that you know the the. To see act is not voidable. It is voidable on account of fraud only when it is such that without which such to see act would not have been made. On the facts, without the fraud told by A, without the lie told by A, B would nonetheless have bought have the would nonetheless would buy this ring. Okay, even though there was no fraud from sorry. I made a mistake. Okay, even though there was fraud from A, B would nonetheless buy the ring from A, so that in this case it's obvious that there is no element of inducement. Okay, B in buying buying the ring from A was not in any way induced by A's fraud. In this case, the to to reach the gap between A and B is not voidable. 
โอเคนะอวรายจัสต์นาวรีเมมเบอร์วิทอลบาวเดอร์จูซิเอ็กซ์บิทวินเอและบีเอเทลส์สไลด์ทูบีเดอร์ดิสเพนนิงวอสบายไอจันทิลมชัยรายบีบิลิฟอินดิสไลด์เซอร์บีบอดเดอร์เพนนิงฟรอมเอซอร์วีเฮดเดอร์คอนทร์บิทวินเอและบี And B bought this painting because of the lie told by A. I mean, told by the other party. What about when the lie was told by somebody else? We have a contract. We have a contract between A and B. B bought the painting because B believed in the lie told by C, not told by A. We have a contract between A and B. Right. B made a contract with A because B believed in the lie. Or believe in the statement told by somebody else. In this, in this case, by C. What is going to be the consequence of the j u r i s d i c t i o n between A and B? In this case, okay. Look at the example here. Okay, let's suppose that A he is an operator of the Three Star Hotel. A runs the Three Star Hotel business, and A, you know, the wants to sell this business. Maybe he has placed he has placed advertisements on the internet for a long while, okay, in order to you know to sell in order to sell this business, but nobody has shown interest in buying yet, okay. On a good day, B came to this hotel. B just came to this hotel, and then B met C by chance. C wanted to help A sell this hotel. Okay, and C told C told B like this. C told B, "Well, B, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I guarantee that this hotel is very good. Okay, this hotel has in fact been the ISO certified. You know, when you, I mean, the, uh, when you are certified that this hotel is ISO certified, I mean, the, that is, you know, you have, you I mean, the, a lot of interest I mean, the, in buying this hotel business, right?" But in fact, this hotel has not been certified by I ISO as t o l B bought this hotel business from A because he believed in the lie told by C. Okay, the lie told by C that this hotel has been ISO certified. So in this case, we have a contract between A and B. The contract of sale between A and B. B bought this hotel business from A because he. Okay, was induced by a lie told by whom? By a fraud, if I try to use the legal term. Okay, B was induced by fraud committed by whom? By a third party. Remember, in this case, C. C is not any. C is not a party to the contract between A and B. So C is a third party. Will the fraud committed by a third party? Render the contract between A and B to be voidable. In this case, you know, if fraud is committed by A, it's obvious that the contract between A and B is voidable. But in this case, fraud is committed by whom? By C, who is a third person. So, what about the contract between A and B here? Will that be voidable? Well, before going to law, I mean, you can just use common sense first because the law. Correspond to normally law co co correspond to you know justice. What should be just, in your opinion? We have the contract between A and B, the, con the contract of sale of the hotel business. Okay, B bought this hotel business from A because B believed in the lie told by C. Can B say sorry? Now I know the truth that you know the the hotel is not ISO certified. So I don't want to buy this hotel anymore. I would like to avoid this contract. Can B say so? Okay, you have to consider also the interest of whom of A. Maybe A know nothing about the lie told by C. Well, there are two possibilities. Okay, the one is that A knew the lie told by C. A knew that B bought the hotel from A because B was induced by a lie lie told by C. And the situation, the poss possibility that. A did not know anything about the lie told by C. A has been honest. If A does know anything about the lie told by C, well, I A did not know of the fraud 
committed by a third party, then would that be the reason for the law to protect A in this case? Yes or no? If A did not know anything about, you know, the, the lie told by C. When, when B bought a hotel business from A, you know, A knew nothing about the lie told by C. A thought that, well, B considered that this hotel was worth buying. Would the, law have, would the law have to protect A in this case? Yes or no? Yes. Right. So, in this case, the law will have to do justice to A as well. Right. The law say this. If, you, if we come back to, if we come to what the law say, okay, here. In section 159, paragraph 3. Remember, 159 has many paragraphs. 1, 2, 3. Right. Paragraph 1 is the general consequence of fraud, saying that the a justice act procured by fraud is voidable. Paragraph 2 deal with what? Right, paragraph 2 deal with just now. Remember, inducement, right? Here, paragraph 2 deal with the inducement. Okay, inducement uh, element. Par paragraph 3 deals with fraud by a third party. Paragraph 3 says this. When a party has made a declaration of an, of an intention owing to a fraud committed by a third person, the act is voidable only if the other party knew or ought to have known of the fraud. That means that if we come back to you know, the same hotel business story just now, we have to distinguish which, between two situations, the one where A knew about the lie told by C and the one where A did not know anything about the lie told by C. If okay, A knew of the lie told by C, then the cell between A and B is voidable. Right. If A did not know anything about the fraud, committed by C, then the sale contract between A and B is not voidable. It is valid. Right? So the reason seems to be very, very clear in itself, in fact, okay? You have to consider the knowledge of the other party, but the knowledge of the other party, just now, the knowledge of A, okay? Whether or not A knew about the, the lie told by C, would have to be judged at the time of the contract. That means that at the time when the contract was made between A and B, whether or not A knew about the lie told by C, if A knew the fact after the contract has been made, then it is immaterial. Let's say that at the time when A and B made a contract, A did not know anything about the lie told by C. One week later, after the contract has been made, a knew the truth. In that case, it does not affect the contract between A and B anymore because the knowledge which was acquired by A was acquired after the contract was made with B already. Okay? Now, Just a while ago, we talked about the fraud by a third person. What about the fraud by two parties? The contract is made between A and B, and both of them tell lies to each other. Okay, should the law protect anyone in that case when two of them, when both of them are dishonest? Is there any reason to protect anyone? Okay, A and B, they make a contract. Let's say that A and B, they make an exchange. A has the, uh, it, let's say that A has the painting. Okay. A has the what? Yes, A, A has the painting. B has the horse, the racing horse. So both of them, A and B, they made an exchange. A would let B have the painting. B would let A have the racing horse. A told B that this painting was by 
you know, the famous artist. In fact, it was not. Okay. B also told lie to A that this racing horse won, you know, the prize in the national competition. That's why you know the A decided to take the horse from B in exchange for, in exchange for his painting. Both of them told lies to each other. In this case, when A knew that the horse, the racing horse, did not win any prize, could A award a contract? Or when B knew that this painting was not by the famous artist, could B award his contract? Okay, in this case, the law say, well, when you know the both parties are dishonest like this, there is no reason. Okay, there is no reason to be afforded any protection by law. Okay, so in this case, the law say this. Okay, if both parties acted with fraud, neither of them can allege it. To avoid the act or to claim compensation, A and B have no remedies at all. Okay, so neither A nor B can just claim that this contract is voidable and avoid the contract. Okay, if A has the racing horse and A, okay, realize that well this racing horse was not worth the painting. Then A could not do anything to against B. Similarly, B could not do anything anything against A. Okay, so both of them will have to suffer the misfortune because they are both dishonest. Okay, so the reason is clear. In fact, in itself. Okay, now. Okay, we are coming to the second type of fraud. Remember, we uh, remember there are three types of fraud. Remember, first is what. Fraud in general, or we call this one general fraud. Second, secondly, the one we are talking now, okay, incidental fraud. What is what is that? In Thai, we call this one con cho chon What is that? Have you studied this one? It's the incidental fraud. What is that? Well, it is something like this. Remember, just now when we we talk about fraud, when we talk about fraud in general, the the situation the situation is this one. The situation, the situation is that if B had known the truth, B would not have made a contract with A at all, right? Remember back to you know the painting story. I mean for uh, you know the ease of understanding, A sold the painting to B. A told a lie to B that this painting was by a famous artist. In fact, it was not from the famous artist. Okay. Uh, if B knew the truth. B would not have bought the painting at all, but in this case, even though B didn't know the truth, B would nonetheless want to buy this painting, but B would accept it at a cheaper price. If this fraud occurs like this, that is termed by law as incidental fraud. So the meaning of incidental fraud is this one: it is the fraud. Which is merely conducive to the other party accepting, you know, the more onerous terms. Okay. B thought that this painting was by Agent Film Shine, so that's why B bought this painting for five million baht. If B knew that this painting was from somebody else, B would nonetheless want to buy this painting, but B would offer a lower price. Okay, so B would accept a more oner onerous terms. In this case, in this case, the, bet the better price, the cheaper price. See, if the fraud operates like this, if the the fraud occurs like this, it is the incident fraud. Remember, with respect to general fraud, the jurisdiction act between A and B will be voidable. But in the case of incidental fraud, okay, the law say that simply because B would nonetheless want to buy from A, okay, so the choosing act would not be voidable. But what is the consequence? Okay, the consequence of incidental fraud is this one. 
the Lord uh, let the let this out uh, in the here we come to the here in section one six one. One six one say this one. One six one provides as follows: if the fraud is only incidental, that is to say, it has merely induced a party to accept more onerous terms than would otherwise have done. Such party can only claim compensation for damage resulting from such fraud. That means that the jurisdiction act between A and B is not voidable, but the law allows B to claim what? To claim compensation from A only. He B knew that this painting was from somebody else, not from a gentleman of Chai, right? Then B would not have bought this painting for one million baht. B would, you know, the, you know, B would just mean that have accepted this painting for just mean maybe just mean a few thousand baht. So B paid more. Okay, in this case, B could get some money back. B could claim some compensation. Okay, have a look at more example. Okay, have a look at the example. Look at example exam number one. Okay. A, he has a Mercedes car, the, sec the second-hand one, okay. He wanted to sell this second-hand Mercedes car to, to, to B. In fact, he advertised on Facebook, okay. Who is A, who is B? I made a mistake here, okay. The A is what? Let's say A is the, sorry, the, a chain of fact, okay. Let's say A is the buyer. B is the seller. The one who wanted to sell is B, not A anymore, okay? Change change effect now, okay? B had the B had the second hand Mercedes car. B wanted to sell this car. B advertised on Facebook. Right. A saw the advertisement on Facebook. So A asked B about this car. And A was concerned with the fact that this car must not have any ex accident at all because a he wouldn't buy the car you know with with uh, which has accident at a higher price a therefore asks b whether or not this car was involved in any serious accident b said no this car you know was free of accident in fact this car had a very serious accident okay if a knew the truth a would nonetheless want to buy this car if A knew the truth, A would nonetheless have, uh, A would nonetheless want this car, right? But A would offer just half price, not the full price. In this case, A did not know the truth. Okay, when he knew the truth, that this car was involved in a very serious accident. Okay, in this case, you can see that. If he knew the truth, he would nonetheless want to buy this car, but at a cheaper price. In this case, okay, he could get some money back. He bought this car for, for how much? For 1.5 million baht. If he knew the truth that this car had a very serious accident, then he would offer just how much? Uh, in this example, maybe just I mean if he had no truth, he would just he would just offer just one million baht only, not one five point five million. In this case, this fraud is just incidental because without this fraud, B without this fraud, A would nonetheless want to buy this car, but at just the price of one million only, okay. But he paid one point five million, or he is required to pay one point five million. In this case, the law say that in the case of the incidental fraud like this, then A could get what? If we go back to what the law say, okay, A could get the compensation for the damage suffered by A. So if A paid one point five million baht. A could just get that 
0.5 million baht back because if he had no interest he would have bought this car for how much for just 1 million baht okay so in this case the law does not say that the contract between A and B is void but the law allows A to get compensation for the damage suffered by A in this case I mean A could get you know the the uh, 500,000 baht back if he had paid you know 1.5 million baht right now the last the last time of the fraud okay fraud by silence you know when we talk about fraud right we talk about the situation where A give a false statement to B this is something in an active sense what about if you have if you have not done anything you just don't review the facts will that be considered as fraud you say you may you may say well I don't lie okay I just do nothing I just keep quiet I just keep quiet silence okay can silence be fraud if you know some facts which you which I mean uh, normally I mean people will reveal but you don't reveal you mean to the, the other party A and B they make a contract okay A just A did not tell any lie to B but A knew some facts which was very very crucial okay that fact was very crucial okay for the this decision making by B A knew this fact but A did not reveal this fact to B I mean A conceal this fact would this concealment render the contract to be voidable as well right this is the you know the fraud by silence okay fraud by silence simply because there is no okay there is no the action in an active sense it is just a question of acquiescence or keeping quiet okay the law anyway realizes that well, sometimes, you know, silence can also cause harm to the other party. If the other party knew, you know, the fact, even though A did not lie, but A just keep this fact from B, if B had known the fact, B would not have made this contract. It could also constitute fraud. Okay, so the, the, what the law say is this, okay, in section 162. 162 says in bilateral juristic acts in bilateral juristic acts okay the intentional silence of one of the parties with respect to effect or a quality of which the other party is ignorant is deemed to be a fraud if look at this condition okay if it is proved that without which okay without which the act would not have been made so from this provision okay one six two even though a keeps quiet okay if b knew the truth if b knew the truth then b would not have made the contract with A at all that is also considered as fraud so B can also declare this contract as what as voidable and therefore B can just avoid this contract correct but even though the law recognizes this in practice the court seem to be quite strict the court will allow this you know the fraud by silence to make the contract voidable only in some special cases only okay we have some example which is uh, which is drawn from the supreme court okay we have an example look at this example in fact this has been uh, this has been drawn from the i think that from from the real case in supreme court right this one let's say that like A has a building he had the buildings okay in fact this building was still under construction right when you wanted to build 
a building, okay, you would have to apply for permission from, you know, from the government, of course. Okay? So in this case, A wanted to build the five-story building. Okay? And he wanted to sell this building. He advertised, okay, this building, which was at the time under construction, okay? He advertised this for sale. Then, uh, in fact, he applied for a permit, okay? And the building was, in fact, the area, the area in which the building was located was, in fact, imp uh, affected by, you know, the appro appropriation plan by the government. The government, in fact, had the plan to, okay, conduct the expropriation. You know the word expropriation or not? Expropriation, you know, when the government want to take your land and pay you compensation, okay? Let's say you have the land and then, you know, the government want to use, want to make a highway, okay? Crossing your land, then the government will have to buy your land, but it's not the voluntary sale. The government compel you to sell your land to the government. That is the expropriation. You get what, what is that, right, in Thai? Yes, very good. Okay, so this land, in fact, okay, was located in the area which was affected by the expropriation plan to be implemented by the government. A knew the truth, but A did not tell this to B because A was afraid that if B had known this truth, B would, would not have bought this land from A. And so A just kept quiet. Okay, when B bought this land from A, B A and B enter into the agreement to sell, right? Okay, it was held that this agreement to sell was also voidable on the ground of fraud. See, this is fraud by what? By silence. A couldn't say, well, you know, B, I don't tell you, I did not tell you any lie, you know, I just kept quiet. It's your fault. You are just so stupid. You know, you, you know, did not follow the news. You know, the, you could just, you know, follow the news from, the, you know, the newspapers or what. Okay, you should have known that, you know, this land was affected by, you know, the government plans to appropriate, okay, this land. When you did not know this, I mean, why can't you put the blame on me? Can, B, can A say so? In this case, the court said, no, A could not say so. Okay, so the contract between A and B is also, in this case, voidable. Okay, so the court relies on section 161 of the CCC. Right, but the important elements, the important thing in this section 162, uh, sorry, not 161, 162. The important thing in section 162 is this one. Fraud by silence will render a juristic act to be voidable only when what? Only when it is proved that without it, the act would not have been made. If A knew the, if A had known the truth, A would not have bought this land at all. Okay, so B would have to prove that. If B could not prove that, then the sale between A and B would not be voidable. See, but as I mentioned, okay, even though, even the law says so, but in practice means in many cases the law. The court seem to allow parties to make use of this section 162 very, very sparingly. In this case, I mean, uh, you know, the, you can say, well, in this case, you know, the, it's fit in section, it's fit in section 162. But in many cases, the court say that even though the facts are very similar to this case, but the court say, no, sorry, in this case, in the contract is not voidable. Okay, uh, I give you the the example. Okay, the the case which the court presented the op op opposing view here. Okay, in this case, the court, op the court presented the op opposing views, okay, a contrary view, okay. A enter into the contract, in fact, an agreement to sell the, the land, okay. A and B enter into this contract. Is this, a, is this agreement? It was the agreement to sell this land, okay, to sell the land. Again, this land was covered by the government plan to build the road. The government wanted to conduct the expropriation of this land in order, to, in order 
for this land to be used for the construction of the road, okay, shall be knew the fact. In, but in this case, I mean, the one who knew the fact was what? Was B. But B, B was a buyer. Right. But the thing is that in this case, you know, the B was happy because of what? Because this land was located in the area which is not, which is not very rich. But when the government has a plan to make the, you know, the road, then that means that, you know, that that land would have more venue, right? So B knew this one, but B kept quiet. B did not tell A. If A had known that, you know, this land, you know, this land was located in this area, and in fact, the government wanted to make the road into this area, then A would not have bought, A would not have sold this land, right? Because this land could have been could have been the, could have been the worst, I mean the much higher, right? So in this case, A sold this land to B. B was happy because he knew that the government wanted to build the road around this area, but B kept quiet. B did not tell A. So the one who wanted this contract to be voidable was whom? Was A. Okay. A did not want to sell this land anymore to B. A just tried to say that, well, this contract was made by what? By fraud. Fraud by silence. Could this fact fit in section 162? That's no. If you look at 162, this fact could, you know, the could fall within 162, right? Because 162 say that the contract can be voidable. When it is proved that without it, the contract would not have been made. Right. If A could prove that without, without, without this, if A knew the truth, sorry, if A had known the truth about you know the plan of government to make to build a road, and A would not have sold it, this land to B, right. so the facts could you know fall on section one six two, but. You know that at the end result, the court in this case held in an opposite way. Okay, the court said this. If you look at this one, the court said that well, if you, you know, the agreement here was not voidable on the ground of fraud. That means the court said that well, this case did not fall within section one six two. Okay, and the court, uh, you know, they're trying to give a reason. Okay. Look at the one which I get, which I put in red ink. The court say, well, silence, which constitutes fraud under section one, section one six one two four one two four one two four was provision. You know, the, what the previous provision now one two four now has become. You know, the one six two, right? The uh, silence, which constitutes fraud, okay, under section the, the current section one six two now must be silence in the. Circumstances where a party is obligated to disclose facts. It is not the duty of the party to disclose them. See, in this case, the court say, well, it's not the duty of whom? It's not, the, it's, it's not B duty to tell A. So in this case, the court said, that, well, in this case, the silence, the silence on B's part could not render the contract to be voidable. Because B did not have any duty to tell A. See, so you, you can see that I mean, the, there are conflicting cases in a, a case a while ago which we discussed, okay, about you know the expropriation plan. Okay, the court held that when somebody just purchased the land, when somebody purchased one when somebody purchased the land without knowing about the expropriation plan. Okay, and the seller knew the truth, then the seller kept quiet, then the contract was voidable. It was considered as fraud as well. Fraud by silence. But in this case, when the person who claimed the you know who claimed the, the remedy is the seller. Okay, who 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 the seller, yes. The court said, Well the seller, you have to protect, to protect yourself, okay? Even though the buyer did not tell you that, you know, that this uh, this land would be they would have the benefit from the construction of road by the government later, then it's not B's duty, it's not the buyer's duty to tell the sellers about this fact. 
So this contract was not voidable under Section 162. So, so you know, in practice, it means the fraud by selling same to same to receive different treatment. Uh, this point we have. Despite the fact that we have section 162, well, in fact, about fraud by silence, in many countries, I mean, the, the, uh, there have been also, you know, debates over this matter, okay, whether or not, you know, the party who know the truth will have to reveal the truth to the party. If you acquire, if you know any facts, whether or not, you know, you have the duty to reveal this fact to the party, it is a subject matter of debate. In some countries, they say, well, if you know the truth, Without investing, then you have to tell the, the fact. But if you know the fact, by means of investment, you have to do something in order to, in order to acquire this fact, then you don't need to reveal this fact to the party. That is the de development of law in other countries. But in our country, you know, in section 162, okay, we have not much development in, in, in the ideas, I mean, so, uh, underlying 162, okay, so we have to follow the decisions of the Supreme Court on this point, but I, I'm sure that I mean, there, there are very few decisions on this point, okay? If you are interested in this point, then you may just I mean, proceed to your master degree st study, okay? And you have you can just write thesis on this matter, okay? If you are interested. Now, what time is it now? Oh my God, it's going to be I mean, the, the 12.30 very soon, okay? So that is...